you've mentioned something about Schnorr and Taproot. Um, what are your thoughts about this update to Bitcoin in, in terms of its promise to improve privacy and scaling and so on? And what, what other things are you interested, excited about in terms of the development of Bitcoin? Well, Schnorr and Taproot, that's the first new protocol upgrade since Segwit uh, in 2017, which was what um, laid the groundwork for Lightning to be developed, basically. And Schnorr Taproot is really the first protocol change in three, almost four years now. So it's we're very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what are I mean? Is there inter something interesting to say technically about what are the things that's actually going to improve? And um, maybe yeah. on the on the politics side, bringing a protocol change uh, on Bitcoin. What does that actually involve? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge deal because the last time we tried to make a change to the protocol, we had a whole civil war over it. And it was incredibly difficult to get SegWit activated in 2017. Uh, and it took all this brinksmanship and threats and all these campaigns. And it was this whole thing. Luckily, I think things have quieted down and there's much more consensus that Schnorr Taproot is a good change to Bitcoin and everyone generally supports it. But everyone kind of has PTSD over the last time when we tried to change Bitcoin. And so we're sort of really dithering over how we actually want to implement it. So it's taking forever because we're trying to set the protocol for how do you change Bitcoin itself. And that all of our assumptions went out the window last time. So we're trying to reset and decide what is a legitimate way to institute a change to Bitcoin. So that's actually the big question right now. It's not, should we implement these changes? We basically all agree that we should. It's a meta question is, What's the valid way to implement new changes to Bitcoin? What's a way that is scalable in the long term and will last and people will consider credible, even if this one isn't controversial at all? So that's where we're at. We're basically debating over how do we implement this change that we all want. If you, to get a feeling of how slow Bitcoin governance is and how deliberate it is, everybody collectively wants the change, but we haven't fully agreed on how we're gonna put it into Bitcoin. <laughs> So it's a classic sort of Bitcoin situation. But what it is, is, I mean, Schnorr is an alternative signature scheme. I think it was encumbered by a patent. And mm -hmm. um, it had only just been unencumbered when Satoshi created Bitcoin, I believe. It's a better signature scheme than elliptic curves, which is what, uh, Bit than ECDSA, which is what Bitcoin uses. And uh, so it's been long enough that we now trust it. You know, kind of in cryptography, it's meant to be Lindy. You know, it's sort of, you want to test it over time and then it's considered safe to use. So Schnorr has been around for long enough that we've decided to rip out ECDSA and insert Schnorr, which is just a different signature scheme, which is more efficient. Um, and it has better properties. Like if you want to do a multi-signature transaction where you, many people collectively sign mm -hmm. uh, in order to permission a spend, that would be more efficient in a, bytes sense than uh, ECDSA, for instance. So it's it's pretty incremental. And then Taproot is all about um, having transactional conditions that are sort of withheld from final entry onto the blockchain. Um, so it it's kind of a way to um, have more private conditional transactions on Bitcoin. Uh, so both of them, I would say, are incremental. Uh, changes. Is this an over-exaggeration that Schnorr Taproot might improve privacy and scaling, which is at, like at the high level of things that people mention? Is that just like a dramatic way of, of trying to frame uh, th what's fundamentally an incremental improvement? Yes, but incremental is the word, right? It's not. We're not going to get an order of magnitude enhancement to either privacy or scaling, but we will get a considerable enhancement uh, but privacy and scaling are actually two sides of the same coin because you get more transactional privacy by removing data from the ledger mm -hmm. so that there's less metadata for people to surveil and analyze. And that's also how you scale by compressing and being really space efficient uh, with transactions. And the more parsimonious you are, the more economically dense, dense each byte that everyone has to retain on the ledger is. And so those are you know, very closely allied concepts.